This birding adventures episode is powered by Nikon, your world leader in optics since 1917. This week on Nikon's Birding Adventures TV, we're in the bird-rich Huachuca Mountains close to Sierra Vista in southeastern Arizona. This week we're going to be journeying up three of the most incredibly productive canyons looking for our golden bird, the elegant trogon. Join us for one of our most epic birding adventures. Let's go birding! The 20 mile long Huachuca Mountains straddle the border between the US and Mexico providing an enticing community of birds and animals with its roots in the Sierra Madre of Mexico. Four major summits dominate the skyline here, and we explored the three highest of these, Ramsey Peak, Carr Peak, and the lofty Miller Peak, which tops out at 9,466 feet. On this trip, we hooked up with the guides from Adventure Birding Company, John Jurger and Jake Molman to take advantage of their unbelievable local knowledge of birds in the beautiful Huachuca Mountains. Tell me a little bit about this area, John. This is San Pedro House. It's one of the birding hotspots in Cochise County. It is, yes. This is part of the San Pedro River National Conservation Area. It's managed by the Bureau of Land Management, and it's an enormous area that has been protected. They've removed all the cattle from the area and ended grazing here, so the natural habitat is really coming back, and you can really see it in the bird life here. The thing that's really great for me, not having birded here a lot, is to come to this place, San Pedro House, and see the great diversity of birds. Right here, we've seen black-chinned hummingbirds, and then driving in, two different species of quail in one flock. We saw scaled quail, and gambles quail together. That was quite unusual, right? Yeah, that's really neat. You don't get to see that a lot. And you can really see the differences very easily when they're together. Obviously the scaled quail with that nice pale top knot and then the gambles quail with that beautiful dark plume on top of the head. Wow, this is really interesting behavior, John. We've got a Gila woodpecker here that's brought a lizard, a nice sized lizard, up to the top of the tree there and he's just pecking at it, trying to kill it or mash it up. And look, it's just flown up into the nesting hole. Look at that. So what's probably happening here is that it's not traditional behavior for a Gila woodpecker to eat a lizard. But this Gila woodpecker's got babies up there and we're trying to get a lot of protein into those young and get them out of the nest as soon as possible. What amazing behavior. That's really cool. I've never seen anything like that before. One of the specialty, albeit drab, warblers of the southwestern United States is the Lucy's Warbler. And we've got one calling on territory behind us here. This bird is one of only two species of warblers in the United States that nest in cavities in trees. The Lucy's Warbler and the other species being the Prothonotary Warbler. A very cool drab warbler of the Southwest. A drab warbler, but with a beautiful voice. The Lucy's Warbler. This Birding Adventures episode is powered by Nikon, your world leader in optics since 1917. And by Cochise County, Arizona, land of legends. And by the Wings Over Wilcox Birding and Nature Festival. And by Pelagic Polarized Sunglasses. This is pretty incredible. We've got a northern goshawk on the nest or close to a nest site. Jake's with it right now. 
and we're going to try and get some footage. These birds are massive, really, really big aerial predators. This is going to be pretty cool. Jake and James are uh, down there right now watching the northern goshawk. We have the largest subspecies of northern goshawk in the U.S. here, actually, called the Apache northern goshawk. I think they're getting some pretty good views right now. We're going to hang back a minute just to uh, make sure we don't disturb the bird. So we're being a little cautious with how we approach this bird. Uh, this is actually a, a very ferocious bird. I know that sounds kind of funny, but the researchers who actually go to investigate northern goshawk nests will often wear a hard hat because the birds will uh, vehemently defend their nest by actually diving and, and hitting people on the head with their sharp talons. So this is clearly the male goshawk sitting in the tree keeping watch. The female is sitting on the nest right now and this is the largest subspecies of goshawk in North America, the Apache subspecies of northern goshawk. And the male is quite a size, but the female is going to be a whole third bigger than the male. Really bulky birds and they will attack just about anything that flies. It's got to be one of the handsomest raptors in North America this beautiful, handsome black mask over the eyes and then this subtle coloration on the breast feathers and then that nice dark crown on those nice red eyes. What a spectacular bird. I've been waiting a long time to see this. This is incredible. I never expected to find this bird in southeastern Arizona in Cochise County. Awesome stuff. Wow, guys. How's that, Jake? Well played. Thanks. Nice. Thanks, John. That is awesome stuff, man. Yeah. I've been waiting such a long time to see Northern Goshawk in North America. What a pleasure. This afternoon, we're at Miller Canyon looking for spotted owls. John, are the owls around here? I don't know if we're in the right area. Let's take a look anyway. It's quite phenomenal that 12 species of owl can be found in the Huachucas and its surrounds. We were fortunate to find five of these, from the diminutive elf owl of the foothills, to the western screech owl that we found sitting outside its day roost in the morning sun, to the large and rapacious great horned owl that is common throughout the area. But one species in particular was on our radar, in the upper elevations of the Huachuca Mountains. The Sky Islands of southeastern Arizona are really a hot spot for owls. Here we are in Miller Canyon looking for spotted owls and on the way up we've got a northern pygmy owl right at the nest hole. Seeing the northern pygmy owl was a welcome diversion and break from the steep climb but we still had one target owl species that we just had to see. Without doubt, the most endangered owl in all of the United States is the spotted owl. And Miller Canyon hasn't failed to deliver because two of these phenomenal creatures are right behind me. We've hiked a little over one mile and James is getting some great shots of a pair of Mexican spotted owls. Most people have heard of the northern spotted owls in California, a lot of controversy with the habitat loss from old growth logging. This population resides in these steep canyons in southeastern Arizona. You know, Jake, we were here in January, we were at Chiricahua National Monument, and we were looking for spotted owl, and the rangers said they knew of a roost site. They couldn't tell us because it was so secret. And here we are in Miller Canyon today and you guys have just shown us the most incredible pair of owls. What a spectacular sighting. I mean look at these birds. If, if there's any form of love 
between birds. This is the real life demonstration of love between birds because the way that they allo preening each other right now, I mean, look at that. Look at that. That's incredible. Just Charlie, amazing. It's really difficult to get this intimate with birds. And they're just so relaxed. I mean, these spotted owls are probably, what, 40 feet from us? Yeah. Absolutely Maximum. amazing. And they're just totally relaxed. They're almost falling asleep some of the time. Yeah. These are the best pair of spotted owls to see in southeast Arizona. I'm zoomed right in on the eyes now and just that bright yellow bill. You can see how sharp the bill is. Looking straight down. What a beautiful bird and those eyes are dark, dark, dark. You know, you often think of owls as having those bright yellow eyes. You know, a lot of the pygmy owls and you even think of burrowing owls and they've got these bright piercing eyes. But spotted owls have got these nice dark, dark eyes. Look at that, the owl's preening his foot and look how razor sharp the talons are. Perfectly adapted for grabbing small mammals. Wow, Jake, you can really see how camouflaged they are sitting in that Arizona madrone tree. You can look, they've got that subtle marking on the underbelly and it almost blends in with the bark of the madrone tree. Really interesting. So that's their tactic for being camouflaged in their day roosts. Wow. I mean, you really have to be pretty determined to see these birds, don't you? It's quite a hike to get up here. We've probably hiked about a mile and a half straight up the canyon. We're at about, what, 7,000 feet right yeah, now? Yeah, just under 7,000 feet. So quite high elevation, quite rough going, but boy is it worth it to be able to get that close to one of the most charismatic and iconic birds of southeastern Arizona, the spotted owl. Yes, I don't want to leave. I could stay here all day. Just another day birding in Cochise County. This Birding Adventures episode is powered by Nikon, your world leader in optics since 1917. And by Sierra Vista, Arizona. Extraordinary skies, uncommon ground. And by Pelagic Polarized Sunglasses. For those birders that want to get off the beaten path, Car Canyon is a great option. There's a beautiful road that goes all the way to the top of the mountain here for some high elevation specialty birds like buff-breasted flycatcher, painted red starts, and possibly even yellow-eyed juncos. So Jake has found us a buff-breasted flycatcher nest. And what the female is doing right now is she's coming in with feathers and soft lining material and lining the inside of the nest. And you'll see her come and place the material in and then she'll tamp her body down in a circular fashion around the inside of the nest. So she's obviously in the end stages of her nest building process. So Buff-breasted flycatchers are a pretty rare bird in the United States. They just barely get here north of the Mexican border in the Huachuca Mountains. This is the best place to find them. They are in a few of the other border ranges, but they're not very common there. And some of the prevailing thinking is that these birds actually do better with uh, natural wildfires in the ecosystem. So the many years that we've gone through with lots of fire suppression, the birds have declined. And that's because these birds are like a pine forest that's very open, very open understory. And the wildfires that used to occur here naturally actually clear out that understory and make for really nice habitat for buff-breasted flycatchers. So we found a uh, painted red start nest right by the side of the road. Pretty unusual location for them. Painted red starts are a ground nesting bird, so they always build their nests on the ground. But in this particular case, right by the side of the road, normally they like to take nesting sites on the sides of stream banks, things like that. And they like to find a little overhanging clump of grass or a rock ledge or a root, something like that to kind of protect the nest. This nest is really unusual. There's just sort of a mass of dead pine needles covering it. Not very well sheltered. It's probably one of the poorer nests I've seen. In this case, we happen to know the female is the one that 
spends the most time on the nest, so we happen to know she was sitting on the nest. But the two birds, the male and the female, are absolutely identical otherwise. They both have that same red belly, the black back, white wing patch, and little white eye arcs below the eye. So there's no way to tell them apart, really. Painted red starts are really unique in that they do all kinds of different things. They'll fly catch, they'll forage just like vireos, and then they have their own unique strategy, which is they fan their tail and their wings and flash those white patches. And what that does is that scares up camouflaged insects that they wouldn't ordinarily see. So when they see the motion of the insect, then they can turn around and capture that insect. Here at Rock Jumper, we deal in the spectacular. From the iconic animals of Africa, to the bizarre birds of paradise in New Guinea, to the beaches of Brazil, to the grand state of Alaska, we help you reach your dream destinations. With over 300 tours to over 100 countries, Rock Jumper leads the pack in adventure travel, and we want to travel with you. We also specialize in private tours. If you have a group of friends you're traveling with, or want to see the seven natural wonders of the world with your family, contact us today. Our friendly, fun, professional guides excel in producing riveting wildlife experiences. That's why Rock Jumper's birding tours and wildlife safaris are so popular. And we offer dazzling photographic tours and unique cultural trips too. Roll with Rock Jumper and see the world. This Birding Adventures episode is powered by Nikon, the world leader in optics since 1917. And by Hobie Mirage Drive Kayaks. Enjoy nature effortlessly. And sponsored in part by Manfrotto, complete solutions for photographers and videographers. Visit manfrotto.us. If you think that Cochise County is just about the birds, you're so wrong. There is so much more to see in this incredible place. Today, we're with the rangers from Karchner Cavern State Park, and we're about to go in this bunker-like structure to see what's inside. Let's go caving. Well, we've got some cave bacon up here, and I want to reach out and grab it and try it, but there's strictly no touching in Karchner Caverns. Is this Canadian bacon? It's the real stuff. It's the real stuff giant sized slithers of delectable bacon from the caves. Yummy. Here at Karchner, it is a very horizontal cave, unlike other caves that have multiple layers. You'll go through tunnels to get into the cave, but eventually you'll be exposed to stalactites, stalagmites. We have helictites, tons of variations and formations, draperies, columns like you see behind me, Kublai Khan, largest known column in Arizona to date, 58 feet tall. Now that you've seen what's hidden beneath the surface, let's go up and go find some birds. Yeah, go ahead. I just heard a uh, trogan down here. Got it. Let's go. Indisputably the best site in the Huachuca mountain range is the Nature Conservancy's 300-acre Ramsey Canyon Preserve. This is a preserve that attracts 30,000 visitors every year and is a hotspot for a variety of summer birds. Looks like they've heard the trogan further down. These guys are pros, man. They've got connected with radios and the whole toot. So now we're getting up into the really good area for uh, elegant trogon. We're into some really nice big sycamores here, lots of big tooth maple, really nice mountain riparian habitat for them. Got him calling, John? Yeah, it just called once. How far away? Well, it's just up the hill here uh, in these oaks, which is a little unusual. I'm just waiting for him to call again, see if we can track it down. a remake of the movie The Waiting Game. <laughs> Trogan version. Exactly. There's one calling. Oh, 
it is. Right there. You see it on that branch oh, coming right across the trail? Right out the open. Yeah. Nice light on it as well. Perfect. Wow. This is awesome. Well played. All right. This is yeah. great. Nice. Let's try to get this guy. Oh, what beautiful light on it. That's, oh, that's magnificent. Elegant trogon, a beautiful male. This is the northernmost occurring species of trogon in the Americas. They start occurring from Guatemala all the way through Central America, through Mexico, and they reach the northern part of their range here in the Sky Islands of southeastern Arizona. What a beautiful bird. A male elegant trogon. Look at that beautiful red belly and that nice bright iridescent green on the back. And there he's turning his head now and you can see the bright yellow bill. And the word trogon is actually a Greek word that means gnawer. And it's because these birds gnaw on fruit and insects with that nice hook shaped but wide bill. Yes, what a beautiful bird. Oh, do you think there's a female around here? Oh, there has to be. There yeah. has to be because there's yeah, a nest, right? Yeah, they're nesting right now, so she has to be nearby somewhere. So where's the nest? Oh, it's right there. I mean, okay, so you see that broken off piece of uh, sycamore trunk right there? Makes a nice little cavity. I think they're oh, probably yeah, yeah, just yeah, nesting yeah. right in there. Just yeah. where that bow looks like it's broken off, right? Yeah, exactly. Oh, he okay. just flew in. Look, he just flew in. Oh, that's oh, awesome. Nice. Oh, there's the female. There's the female. Look, 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 look. Sitting up oh, there. Oh, yeah. Got her. Beautiful. You can see totally sexually dimorphic trogons where the males are the bright, bright colors and the females are very, very drab. Not only do we get to see an incredibly rare bird for the United States of America, but we've got a pair feeding young in a nesting cavity. Pretty spectacular, that's, eh? That's a once in a lifetime kind of wow. experience. Wow. You yeah. guys are really treated this week. That's our golden bird for this week. <laughs> All right. Elegant Trogan. Oh, sweet. See you next week. So we have quite a history with losing drones on Birding Adventures TV. This is our fourth drone. And I flew it all the way over that ridge, over the top of that mountain, over onto the other side, and we lost contact with the drone. And then John and Jake said, they're going to run up there quickly and go and try to find it. We thought, oh, there's no way they'll find the drone. Woo! No way! Can't believe these guys got this thing. That's incredible. <laughs>